All right. All right. Well, once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone from wherever you are joining us, uh, either at home or totally alone in your office, like I am right now. Um, <laughs> welcome. Uh, we're very excited for what we're going to show you um, with the, so we had the opportunity to build an integration for CloudShark with uh, Cortex XOR. And really, it really allows us to demonstrate how you can accelerate incident response um, using packet captures as part of uh, the Cortex XOR uh, playbook and part of that process. And so um, we, uh, we're really excited to show you this. And uh, I have with me today, uh, Pramuk from uh, Product Management and Marketing at uh, Cortex XOR. And he actually has been involved in security operations centers for years now and actually has helped build them and put together. And so he's, he's pretty familiar with how all this works. And then I also have with me uh, Tom Peterson, who is kind of our packet guru here. And he, uh, he is very, he's very interested in um, the interesting things that packet captures can show, especially when it comes to doing security incident response uh, with unusual things like hunting down malware and, and that sort of thing. He likes to do those on a regular basis, so he'll be helping us out today. Uh, we are using Zoom for this webinar, so we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end. Um, we ask that you do please, by all means, start asking questions during the um, during during the webinar and uh, we'll get to them at the end it'll give us a nice queue of things that we can answer for you and uh, please do type them into the q a box uh, rather than the chat because it gives us all, we can all see them and it, and it makes it really easy for us to follow who's asking what questions and what things have been answered all right what are we going to show you today um so we're going to go into the cortex xor platform from palo alto networks and how it works uh, and whatever its major use cases and pramuk is going to show us how that all works um, and talk a little bit about why automation is so important for incident response. I mean, at this point, this is, this is what people in the security operations centers rely on to be able to uh, get things done as quickly as possible. It's just, it's just there's so many things to analyze that um, there's enough tools out there that can do a lot of stuff for that for you automatically. But eventually, when it comes down to some, you know, some certain incidents, you, you have to get your analysts involved. And when the analysts have to get involved, it's best for them to be able to look at the packet captures because the packet captures have all of the data you need um, of, of what happened and, and provides you um, kind of a complete picture of everything that happened on the network. Um, and then we're gonna show you how Cortex and CloudShark work together. And, they work together so well because both of them are designed as collaboration platforms, right? So uh, XOR is designed such that, you know, you can collaborate on the information that you, you've gotten back through your other tools. Um, maybe those are hashes or indicators of compromise. Um, you can sh and share them with the rest of your team in the war room and that kind of a thing. And, and CloudShark is built specifically to fulfill those same use cases around packet captures and the analysis that you've done on packet captures uh, so you can um, work with your team on solving those problems, um, give them the context they need right away and, and include it in things like reports at the end so that uh, you have a record of everything that happened. And then we'll do a live Q&A with uh, Tom and Pramuk and we'll answer your questions. Uh, but first, I did want to talk a little bit about what CloudShark is. For those of you that uh, that don't know, I know we do have some of our CloudShark customers on the on the webinar today. Um, but CloudShark really is a collaboration and analysis platform for looking at network packet captures, and we feel this is important just because packet captures are actually very useful um, when you have the opportunity to work with them well. And CloudShark does that by providing this centralized, secure, searchable capture database so that you can stay organized. Um, we have um, powerful and responsive in analysis tools that work um, to kind of sort through the busyness of a lot of packet capture things to help you get to the things that you need to get to. And all of that works right in your browser. Um, so that helps uh, for two reasons. One, you know, Cor Cortex is, is a uh, browser-based piece of software that lets you um, work really well with it so you don't ever have to leave your browser you're operating in the same environment and above all you can share those things and collaborate with your whole team on it um, when those things are put together like i was saying automation is key but uh but eventually when an analyst has to get involved they really need access to everything that happened and many of the tools that are integrated in uh, cortex xor can produce packet captures right um but you know without uh 
without some additional software, you're gonna have to, you have to download them and maybe open them in Wireshark as some other tool. And that removes you from the context of working in a browser and working with your entire team. Um, and so when we put these two things together, they really help you collaborate with your whole team uh, in, the, in the war room, like I was saying, or when you're uh, generating your incident reports. So I'm gonna turn things over to Pramuk, who's gonna talk a little about Cortex. Thank you, Jason. So uh, Cortex XO is industry's leading security orchestration automation response platform with four key focus areas of automation orchestration, real-time collaboration, case management, and native threat intel management. So automation orchestration is really uh, the workflows that can be automated with the help of bidirectional API integrations with all the different security product vendors. So orchestration, as we understand, is the capability to control the entire security product stack from a centralized location. And automation is a natural subset of it. Cortex XOR brings the power and capability of this into the security operations and threat intel teams with the help of built-in out-of-the-box uh, workflows called playbooks, as well as with the help of integrations, which has bidirectional uh, APS, we expose it as commands that can be easily used as well as on an ad hoc basis, both as automation as well as manual basis from the built-in command line interface or as a playbook that we'll see in the demo. The second core pillar is the real-time collaboration. One of the natural uh, limitations uh, when we see in the security operations world is the ability to collaborate actively between different uh, teams within the security as well as outside security. For instance, if there is uh, a security attack investigation going on, the network uh, security might be required to share certain artifacts such as PCAP files for their own analysis or with an external uh, team such as a forensics team or even to the SOC. And this really is a painful process today that has to go through certain workflows, which needs to be documented, uh, as well as uh, required for reference purposes. So Cortex XOR provides a chat ops uh, capability, uh, we call it War Room, which we'll see in the demo, which will capture all the real-time collaboration, uh, be it human-to-human uh, -human communication in the form of a chat ops, or even the exchange of artifacts, such as PCAP files or even screenshots. Uh, or even other types of files into this war room. And this war room is really unique to each investigation, meaning that at any point of time, the, the SecOps as well as threat intel teams can come back and take a look at this specific uh, collaboration platform where you can actually go and take a look at all the information which is required, which went into actively investigating. And uh, the third component is the case management. Case management is, is a powerful ticketing uh, system built right into the Excel platform. And this really is uh, very helpful in terms of tracking an incident right from the time when the incident got created in Excel, which is when the alerts get ingested and gets created as an active investigation all the way to the remediation. And this is really powered by a very strong uh, widget library that Excel provides out of the box. And it's very intuitive in the sense for each different type of investigation we give the power back to the security operations team for them to create their own case management because we understand different teams have different use cases and scenarios and preferences. So this case management is fully flexible in the sense uh, you can actually customize this based on different requirements. And last uh, component is the native threat intel management. We are very proud to launch this as part of the Cortex XO platform. And this comes with uh, a number of threat intel feeds uh, out of the box, including Palo Alto Network's very high reliability autofocus feeds, which is really uh, powered by our Unit 42 research team, uh, as well as we have a number of built-in out of the box uh, integrations with the open source feed as well as commercial paid feeds. And uh, we have again, the ability to share this threat intel, which is post-processing to your customers and your different uh, entities outside as well. So that's an optional component. So all these four core pillars really uh, bridges a number of gaps that we see in a SecOps uh, in terms of being able to automate the repetitive processes, uh, closing the investigations on time by enforcing SLAs in terms of collaborating and being able to retrospectively go and take a look at all the uh, collaboration pieces as well as artifacts that went into an investigation complete control over your ticket management, as well as being able to collaborate with threat intel teams uh, to perform all the forensics of, with, the, with the help of the indicator feeds that we already have in the same platform. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the example integrations that we have uh, out of the box. So we uh, today around have 
somewhere around between 350 to 400 integrations that we have this coming in every two weeks. We work actively with almost all the security product vendors be across all the security categories, including SIEM, Threat Intel, Malware, Endpoint, Network Security, Authentication, uh, Email Gateway, Ticketing, Messaging, Cloud, and also outside security. As long as there is a built-in uh, open APIs, we, we work and we make it available out of the box. And since we are mentioning about cap it, uh, packet captures, we have the ability to get those packet capture from multiple different sources. One of the natural sources is the Polytron Networks firewall, uh, as well as other firewalls that we have integrations with. The second category is the network detection response platforms uh, as well. So let's go and take a look at with all this, uh, what are the use cases that really opens up and helps the security team? So as you see, there are, uh, since the platform is built as part of this bi-directional API, we have alert generation sources and enrichment and response uh, sources. And this really opens up a number of use cases uh, which could not have been implemented probably, uh, but this includes SecOps, incident management, phishing response, uh, threat hunting, vulnerability management, cloud security, operation technology use cases, as well as network security use cases. So we have the ability to really, open. this really opens up doors to really get most of the use cases, uh, which were kind of a hidden potential, but this really brings it into action. So with this, uh, let me just go ahead and share my screen so we can jump straight into the demo. So hope everyone can see the screen. So this is the Cortex XOR uh, platform, and this really is a single pane of glass. As you see here, I'm on the settings page, and we have all the integrations that are uh, natively configured right here, which is available as part of the out of the box uh, integration. So we have across all the different categories, uh, including uh, threat intel, forensics, endpoint, email. So all these different products are made available, these integrations. So let's go ahead and search for Cloud Shark. So searching and integration is uh, very straightforward and simple. And all you need to do is just go and search for uh, by the keyword. So this really opens up the Cloud Shark integrations, which uh, is very easy and straightforward to configure. All you need is uh, the Cloud Shark Enterprise URL and an API token. And you can actually go and test this instance uh, for successful. And you can also add multiple instances of Cloud Shark if you have. And as you see, uh, we have like four uh, built-in out-of-the-box uh, commands, and we expose this as part of commands, and this can be used either in the playbooks that we'll see, or also on this built-in uh, CLI, which also doubles up as a chat ops capability. So if I uh, type Cloud Shark, you have all these commands, and one of the interesting commands is the capture uh, Cloud Shark info by passing the capture ID, which really gives you a rich metadata information on the uh, Cloud Shark packet captures. So let's take a look at uh, an example here. So here's an example for this demo. I'm using it to really analyze a PCAP uh, file. And this is the ticketing uh, platform. So as I mentioned, I have created a ticket. So I got uh, a PCAP ng file here, uh, threat assess assessment or PCAP ng. I can actually create this. And as I mentioned, we can attach these files uh, with the help of uh, on the CLI itself. So I created a ticket and I attached this file. And uh, after this, we have like a couple of actions that's performed automatically. For instance, if you see that file itself was uh, analyzed by Cortex X source machine learning algorithm and automatically extracted and enriched uh, for the MD5. And on the work plan section, I had a playbook which I have created to automate all the steps that I have taken in order to analyze the speak app. So as a first step, I'm actually uploading this uh, into the Cloud Shark instance. And once uploaded, uh, this particular playbook task is giving me a link directly to go to the Cloud Shark. And we'll see that in a minute. And each of this rectangular task is basically a manual action, which we have automated with the help of this playbook. So this playbook really runs in real time, and this could be running on hundreds of uh, PCAP uh, files. And this really helps you with speed and scale. So once you have uploaded the Cloud Shark, uh, I'm using again the command to get the Cloud Shark uh, file details from the uh, Cloud Shark. So as you see here, I have all the metadata, including the average packet rate, packet size. And since this is a PCAP NG file, we also have the ability to add comments into it, which adds, brings in rich context. And you also have the big data rate, data size, and the uh, end time file name, file source, a whole bunch of information that you could actually view uh, within XOR. So you don't have to leave XOR uh, at all in order to view this, but at least you have this context and you can perform a lot of operations uh, 
with the help of uh, this data. So you also have, for instance, the tag list, which is PCAP MG and NEXEC. So this tag really provides rich context. And, uh, and you can also basically go ahead and mark this as a note and also as, uh, as an evidence. So if you want, uh, you can just mark this and also create a tag for a future reference purpose. So this has gone and captured all the information. You can also download this file actively into the cortex XOR sandbox. So we also have a sandbox environment. We call it Playground. And it downloads and captures all the hashes and performs automatic analysis. And then uh, over here, what this uh, for this scenario, what we are doing is we are notifying CloudShark SME for information on hashes. So once we have these hashes in place, uh, we are getting uh, we are checking the reputation of this hash on the wildfire. So as you see, this uh, wildfire integrations again support wildfire, and this has written it as a malware. So this is really a malicious file. So uh, the playbook automatically judges it is malicious with the help of the wildfire verdicts. And once we have a verdict, it can actually go and either block it on the firewall or endpoint or even on the send it to an SIM block list in this case. And once it is done, uh, we have the ability to create a summary report. And once you have this report, by default it is PDF, which we all support Word. And you can actually email this to all the stakeholders automatically. So as you saw here, um, this really helped analyze a PCAP probably automatically and you're getting a report as well, but you could have done all this manually as well within EXO because you have this ad hoc capability of running the commands from this uh, CLI. And we'll see that in the work war room section as I mentioned. So war room uh, is basically a repository. It's a chat ops capability. It also doubles up, as I mentioned, uh, ability to run commands and have it uh, listed here for future reference purpose. So as you see, we have all the information captured here, the incident name, when did it occur, who was the owner, what is the severity, what phase of the investigation was it. So all the rich context in here. Also, we got the, uh, the PCAP NG file attached here. And all the output of the playbook is basically captured here. So as you mentioned, we also have the capture file info listed here. And I had marked it as a note and an evidence. So since I had marked it as a note and as an evidence, it shows up also on the evidence board. So the evidence board basically can act as a rich uh, repository for you know audit purpose. You can just always go back and take a look at it. And it has also uh, close this incident. So as I mentioned, you have the ability to upload the files here. This file could be PCAP files, even other screenshots, whichever is kind of valuable for the investigation. And you also have this uh, incident info page, uh, which is again part of the case management where you can actually completely customize this page. So I have the case details, timeline information, indicators uh, listed here, but you could also have some other information and artifacts uh, extracted and captured and listed here. For instance, one of the Routine ones that we see is um, for a phishing email, we have the rasterized phishing uh, email page displayed right here. So that really acts as a good uh, repository and also a good reference. So uh, we have this MD5 file, for instance. Uh, I just wanted to touch base upon the thread intel management capability. So thread intel management is a powerful uh, functionality that we have built out of the box, which brings you to this page, clicking on any IOC. And you also have the related incidents information. You have the information on the timeline, whether the, what is the reputation of this particular indicator, which other sources uh, judge it as what, because you could have multiple sources for the reputation. So uh, that's again, a quick insight into the rich context on the threat uh, pieces, the IOCs. And moving on to the related incidents page, you can also, quickly capture what other incidents are related to this specific uh, cloud shark incident, as well as you have the canvas page, which shows you all the relationships. It's a good visual correlation between the indicators as well as the incident. So here I have the analyzed PCAP NG file, uh, which you see here is already linked uh, to specific uh, uh, indicators. In this case, the file hashes, for instance. So it's a good, uh, uh, visual correlation, you can actually get it with a click of a mouse button. So very intuitive, very straightforward. And you can also export it as a PNG and also send the snapshot to the war room. And this really helps you uh, quickly analyze and get all the context and make certain decisions, which would have taken a lot of time. And as you see here, the dbot, which is the ML algorithm is also suggesting uh, you with different, uh, as the new information is made available it, in real time, it actually makes uh, suggestions as well. 
So uh, that's in a nutshell, uh, the power of the playbook and the integration with CrowdShark. We get all the information and um, this, again, this playbook can run on hundreds of PKF files. So the value is really the speed, but also control and scale. You could have the SLAs enforced on this playbook or on each individual task. And we also have the ability to uh, basically automate the response scripts in terms, in, in case the SLA is breached. So that's pretty much, and let's see, uh, once this, uh, we also have this link to the CloudShark. So for those who are interested to know more, we can actually go deep dive into the CloudShark right from the Cortex-X source playbook. So this is really, one again, a uh, quick capability to just launch CloudShark if you want to know more information. And at this point, I will hand it over to Tom, who will take you through the CloudShark. So hi, everybody. Um, let me share my screen here. All right, so I'm gonna pick up right where, where we left off here. Um, so this is the this is the view of the PCAP, you know, where you would do the actual PCAP analysis. Um, you're looking at all the packet level details. Um, this is kind of the standard, um, you know, view when you're analyzing packets. Um, so in that example, you know, I think another really strong value is just this PCAP is already here. So if we're investigating an incident, um, with all the various integrations that Cortex XOR has, um, you can get these PCAPs, you know, automatically um, have them uploaded to Cloud Shark, and now you're just right where you can actually look at the packets and analyze. There's no downloading extra software um, or anything like that. So I want to show you just a few features of Cloud Shark that I think work well with this this integration as well. Um, for this example here, you know, maybe we're, we're investigating a, uh, an alert from a scene. Um, and we really just need to drill down and, and determine if this is, you know, maybe a false positive. Um, if, if, the, if a machine was actually infected, you know, we can get some information, do some analysis on that um, by viewing the PCAPs here. So the place I like to start doing this sort of analysis is with the threat assessments analysis tool. Um, so this is going to run the PCAP uh, through an IDS. And here you can just see kind of a high level overview of, you know, were there any alerts triggered in this uh, PCAP? So here we've got some information about that, the severity. If we open this up in an advanced analysis window, um, you can see we, we are at a new screen here. Uh, I did open up a new tab. So I actually do also have a link to this view um, in Cloud Shark that I could, you know, send back to the war room um, as I'm doing my analysis. Um, I'll show you a few other places where that is, but nearly every view in Cloud Shark, you could get a direct URL link to that. Um, so if you're doing, you know, real time analysis with, with a coworker, um, being able to send those back and forth through the war room where that, that information is saved is, is also really powerful. Uh, so I'm just gonna run through this one quick. Here we can kind of see up at the top, um, some of the endpoints that have alerts associated with them. Um, we can see here as a local machine 172.116. And here we can just see all the alerts that, that were triggered um, during the PCAP. So here we can see uh, the, the, this machine is being redirected to an exploit kit. Um, all these additional alerts are that exploit kit trying to find any, you know, vulnerable pieces of software that that, that browser might be running. Uh, and as we go down just a little further, we can see, you know, we are retrieving some payload from now a, another IP address. And now we can see where, where that machine is doing ransomware check-ins. Um, so we just have that information right there. Um, if you do go back up, you can click on an individual alert. So here we'll, we'll look at this initial one where the browser was redirected. And so clicking that is going to pop up some information about the alert. You know, I have a full title. It's typical to what you might see in an, in an IDS alert. Um, you know, if you have any Suricata or Snort rules, those, those do work with Cloud Shark as well. Um, but here we can see the payload. 
any alerts that triggered on that payload. Wow. And again, if we're trying to do this kind of deep dive analysis and, and really kind of dive into what's going on, uh, we do also have a link to the entire stream between those two, those two associated endpoints. Um, and just once again, you know, if we do open this up in a new window, that again, just gets a unique URL um, that we can use with the War Room with, with the other Cortex XOR features. Um, to really kind of save this analysis or to work and collaborate with a, with a team member on it. Uh, but going back, we can take a look at the full stream that caused this alert. Uh, so here we can see the actual, you know, initial HTTP request that is causing this. So we can see what, uh, what servers is going to, what host is connecting to. Um, if we look in here, should be able to find. Oh. There's an iframe in here. There we go. So you can see, you know, embedded in that website, um, there is an iframe uh, going to this host here as well. Um, and then if we wanted to, you know, get, get back to the, since we do have that full PCAP behind all of this data, um, we can actually go back and get to this, you know, PCAP analysis view. Um, here, since we were looking at a particular stream, you know, we actually have that filled in to the display filter box. So now we're just looking at that traffic associated with that alert. Uh, notice one, once again, that is a URL too. So if we, you know, are stuck at a certain spot, um, if we're looking at this stream, you know, we can actually add some annotations in here and include some of our packet analysis. So maybe it's something like, I need help. This one. And you can send that uh, link directly to where you are in your analysis. Uh, into the war room and collaborate on, on, you know, just closing out this alert as, as quick as possible. Uh, no one's going to have to redo any analysis. If you do determine, you know, this machine did get infected, you can just add that as an annotation. And maybe get someone you know, on the networking team involved to you know, quarantine that machine or, or get, get that user to update their software. Uh, but all that analysis you've done getting to that point, you know, going through the threat assessment analysis tool, um, looking at a particular stream is kind of all saved there. Uh, which makes it just really easy to collaborate on packet analysis. You know, everyone has, there are a lot of different skill levels out there. So having these, these links and saving that can be really nice to help get someone up to speed. Uh, and then again, if we do want to bring some more information from CloudShark into Cortex, you know, we do have you know, a variety of other analysis tools. Um, one in here would be the HTTP analysis tool. So here we could look at you know, any objects that were transmitted over HTTP. Uh, if we take a look at that host name that we found earlier, you can see this one. Um, so here we have the, you know, SHA-1 values. These are the hashes that uh, Pramuk was able to put into a scene to start blocking these. If these are new, new threats that were found. Uh, so there are some files downloaded. And uh, these files can actually be downloaded and added to that, you know, that incident report as well. And that's... That's essentially all, all of, I'm going to show about CloudShark unless there are any questions that come in, you know, I can bring this back up, so. Great. All right. Thanks, Tom. Um, so I just want to go over the integration benefits one more time uh, before we get into questions. Uh, so, I mean, what we just saw was basically, you know, you, you end up uh, automating packet capture through the playbook. Um, you get a, a link to a file 
um, that you can use to go and analyze directly in Cloud Shark, and then any of the um, artifacts that you end up discovering by doing your packet capture analysis, you can take and put right back into Cortex and make it part of your incident response, um, your, your, your entire incident response process in Cortex um, and it, all of the context that Cortex provides for you and the entire team um, kind of all stays consistent between going to doing deep packet analysis and going to back and using your other tools. And that's what we really like about it. Um, and that really makes the incident response faster. Um, it empowers the analysis, it, it empowers analysts um, when they do have to look closer at things. Um, and it, one other thing that we actually didn't uh, show in CloudTrack, but it, it is a repository of your captures too. Um, and so we have mechanisms by which um, you can go through and, uh, you know, if you have indicators, indicators of compromise that you found, and maybe there was some problem in the past that, uh, that was never fully resolved, or you want to make sure that there was something you didn't miss, um, you, can, you can go and do that retrospective analysis on, um, on, on the packet captures because it really does represent all of the network traffic and so all of the information of an incident of what happened um, and gives you a valuable history of that. And then uh, lastly, right alongside with Cortex, it's, it really streamlines, streamlines your operations, uh, getting your whole team to work together, uh, getting the reporting process, uh, you know, sort of uh, consistent across your organization. And uh, it just makes it easier overall to do things. Um, we do have some resources here I wanted to bring up here. If you are, you can find CloudShark Enterprise. So one thing I did want to bring up, so uh, the examples that we're showing you were on um, uh, CS Personal, which is kind of just a our hosted version of CloudShark that we use to, sh to show people things and for individuals who want to be uh, using CloudShark. But the, the real meat of CloudShark is in CloudShark Enterprise. And uh, you can find that at cloudshark.io and re request a trial. And uh, we can show you how to set that up uh, and integrate with Cortex. Um, and consequently, you can also try uh, the community edition of Cortex uh, uh, at this link right here. So like I was saying, we'll turn over to questions. And if you do have questions, please type them in the question box. Um, I did see that we had a, come a couple come over chat too. So uh, Pramuk and Tom, if, can, if, can you see, you can see both the Q&A box and the chat box? Yeah. So, so the first question is, uh, what is the threat intel source for CloudShark and uh, from XOR? So on the XOR side, we have integrations with uh, hundreds of threat intel sources. Uh, so it could be one of those sources that you have actually uh, configured and enabled. So uh, again, that's that's as simple as that. So you, we have integrations built in out of the box. And in this case, we are getting the PCAP files from one of the sources such as a firewall. And we're getting all the PCAP information rich context from CloudShark. Tom, do you want to answer the part? Yeah, I think like there was another question about um, the max PCAP file size that CloudShark supports um, so our upper limit there is four gigabytes for packet um, for packet capture um, you know depending on the, the resources you put at that server you might you might not want to or try to analyze four gigabytes of packets all at once um, right yeah. and, and one thing we do try to hit home about that is that you know that diving into a packet capture you want to it's, it's kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, so you want to be able to uh, know that when you're getting into that situation that you already do have kind of something that you're looking for. And CloudTrack does have a lot of tools for um, splitting up captures into smaller pieces uh, if, if you really want to do that, if you need to do that. Um, or, you know, um, a lot of capture tools uh, allow you to capture, you know, very specific kinds of information. And that actually reminds me of another question that we had here. Um, what are some of the actual capture sources that can be automated with Cortex? So capture sources are need. So, I mean, so we support probably all the different indicator types. So uh, PCAP, PCAP, NG are the two types of files. And, but from, again, again, there was a question on the threat intel sources. So uh, Cortex XOR has this Palo Alto Networks autofocus uh, built in. And we have the daily threat feeds coming in automatically. So that's a good uh, threat intel source, which Cortex XOR uh, users would have automatically with the product. And for those who are looking at the, the threat assessment tool that Tom was showing, the behind the scenes of that is uh, the Suricata system. 
that's where those alerts are coming from. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Pramuk, does, does Cortex XOR uh, have playbooks around threat intel management? Yes, so Cortex XOR has a number of uh, playbooks built in out of the box uh, available with the threat intel management. I would really highly recommend uh, folks to sign up for the free community edition that comes with all the integrations, including with CloudShark pre configured. You just have to add your uh, API keys and credentials. And the playbooks for the threat intel management, along with other use cases, are already. Uh, built into the platform. So you can just start using that. Great, great. Now, and Tom, I remember when you built uh, one of your first playbooks when you were building the integration there, was, what was it that you were using to go and grab a capture with? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, there, is a, there is an integration with a, a really great open source capture tool called uh, Moloch. So that might be where you're, you're capturing, you know, all your PCAP files everywhere. And then that integration, you can actually go in and, and slice that up into a smaller piece to put into a, an incident that you're working on within Cortex XOR. All right. So I see um, a third question. Can we add a third party PCAP monitoring box with XOR? Yeah, as long as you have, uh, the APIs, you can actually create your own integration, but you can also manually add a PCAP file into the war room because we can add files right there. Right. And then you can operate on that, that PCAP yes. just like you would with exactly. anything else, right? Yep. And upload, Everything and upload else will be, from a response perspective, it will remain the same. So irrespective of the, the source. Right. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, as, as I'm sure people usually ask, um, <laughs> this has been recorded and uh, we will uh, make this video available to, to everybody who is here. And um, if you have any further questions, like I was saying, um, make sure that I, I think I'm still sharing my screen up there. Yeah. Um, feel free to reach out to us at, uh, at, at Kodak or at, uh, at Cortex, if you have any questions about how to set this up and integrate it. Um, and we are always looking for new ways to put these things together. So if you end up finding a cool new use case for, um, you know, through some other uh, XOR integration that works directly uh, with PCAPs and ends up uploading the Kodak and ends up making a cool story around you solving a problem. We are always excited to hear information like that. So, <laughs> um, all right. All right. Well, thank you everybody. And uh, we will hopefully uh, see you all next time and uh, we will get that video out to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you for Pramuk and thank you, Tom. Thanks. Bill.